solidarity economy. So it's the idea that, you know, our economy, or most economies, are based on making profit. And that's the motivating factor. But a solidarity economy is talking about the distribution of goods in order to meet needs of communities. So here they're having um, the, the beans are representing the teachers, and they're teaching about tekio, which is uh, an indigenous word that represents collective work. Which is very neat to me because in, in English we don't have one word to describe collective work because we have a very individualist culture. <laughs> but in their culture, they have one word to describe it because tekio is a central aspect of their culture. Um, and it's the idea of a work party. So if you live in a community, you know, once a month, maybe, maybe more often sometimes, everyone in the community is expected to come out and work for free on collective projects. So maybe a well, or maybe, you know, a school, or whatever, and everyone comes together to build it. And so this is a central theme of how they arrange their society. And so we have all these different bees engaging in these various forms of production. So here, they're designing a permaculture uh, garden. Um, here, they're making their own paper. Here, this is neat, they're, they're creating um, habitats for different pollinators. And it's interesting because they're making like bird houses, and this is a bat house right here. Um, and so they realize that they're part of the same ecology that benefits from pollination. And so even though they're not building it for themselves, it's just sowing the solidarity that they have in order to produce a more wealthy ecosystem for everybody. Uh, they're making food. Here they're talking about how to uh, eliminate the intermediary for how to get food straight from the farmers to the plate. Um, all the bees here are the um, melipona bees, which is also called the stingless bee. And so here you can see kind of an introduction to the melipona bee, where here you can see these vanilla plants. They're taking care of this melipona bee. And over here you can see the melipona bees, they're all taking care of this vanilla uh, plant, feeding it honey and whatnot. And then you can see the seeds of the vanilla bean are joining with the eggs of the melipona bee to create the phases of the moon to represent reproduction. And that's because the melipona bee is the only known pollinator of the vanilla plant. And so it's an example of how interdependent and fragile our ecosystems are, that we have an insect and an animal, or an insect and a plant species that have evolved together such that, yeah, one can't exist without the other. And well, maybe the melipona bees can exist without the vanilla. But, and so above it, you can see this uh, little larva uh, baby, Melipona bee, is they're all engaging in various forms of play and education. So this one's doing street theater um, to talk about their own history of colonization. And for the Melipona bee, uh, they were colonized by the European honeybee because the European honeybee produces more honey, so it was more favored by the colonizers to, you know, breed and produce. And so it destroyed melipona bee habitat. And now the melipona bee is reliant on indigenous beekeepers to keep their populations alive. 